Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome, welcome on this happy, happy Thursday. I hope and pray without any doubt that you had a tremendous day at work as you are discovering the gifts, the talents, the abilities that God has put on the inside of you. We know that work releases our potential. So I pray that this has been a potent day, a day of power, a day of might, a day of strength, a day of favor for you and yours. I pray that you have seen God's choices, blessings rest on your life. Therefore, you able to understand that you are ready to be sharpened in the things of God. Proverbs 27 verse 17 declares Iron sharpeneth iron so that the man sharpen the countenance of his friends. So we're here each and every Thursday night on sharp points. I'm Bishop Van Sharp, and I know, hope and pray that you are excited about tonight. Of course, we are dealing with owning property and starting businesses. We believe like never before that it is the will of God that the church the body of Christ, be the light of the world, be the salt of the earth, that we are to influence those around us and bring about an attitude and a hunger and a thirst that will cause men and women to want to be like Jesus. That's my prayer for you. All right. I want you to hit that uh, share button, hit that like button, get ready Amen. To follow and subscribe with us on Sharp Points. I want you to get on that phone, text somebody, call somebody, email somebody. Let them know that Sharp Points is on the air. Now, normally each and every Thursday night, we're going to come on from 7 to 730. But because we've been doing this whole series and we on part number 11. Can you believe that we are dealing with 11 parts and we are on 11 part right now? of owning property and starting businesses. So without any further ado, I want you to hit that like button, hit that uh, share button, hit that follow button, hit that subscribe button and connect with those, amen, that are really serious, those who are thinkers, those who are innovative, those who are creative, those who are brilliant in the body of Christ. I believe it's the will of God that we release the genius that God has put inside of us that God has placed upon us, that we release the genius that God has given us to other people and we inspire them as they inspire us. We're not competing. We're not comparing. We're just trying to make sure that we don't waste this moment, that we don't waste these hours, these uh, months, these days, these years that God has given us. Let us value our time here on earth and let us make it count. And this is one way to do so. Let's get ready to have a word of prayer and go into tonight's message. OK, are you ready tonight? Come on, get connected with that brilliant friend. I know you got some thinkers in among your friends. I know all of your friends, amen, are not just people who love to goof off and play games. I hope and pray you got some friends who are serious about leaving and making a difference. And that's the friend that I want you to connect to tonight. All right, let's get ready. Amen. Before we do, again, I want to remind all of you that I have written 12 books and book number 11 and book number 12 are out. That's right. This book called Long Distance Runner, Running to Receive the Prize. Come on. If you're serious about getting a good read in your hands, this is it. I'm telling you. This book is stirring the country. Amen. This book is stirring lives all over the place. It's called Long Distance Runner Running to Receive the Prize. In fact, a lot of people even now are talking about pandemic fatigue because why? They never expect or believe to be in anything but for a brief moment. But you have to recognize that certain things require that we endure. The Bible said endure hardness as a good soldier. The Bible also tells us, amen, that they through faith and patience, steadfast endurance, they inherited the promises. Then James says, let patience 
have her perfect word that you may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. So we're going to be people who are strong and mighty and powerful and develop character in our lives. We have to recognize that there are certain things we have to outlast. There are certain things we have to demonstrate a tenacity. And the Bible said, having done all the stand, we are the stand. So this book, Long Distance Runner, teaches you how to run this race, amen, effectively, because we're not in a sprint. We're in a marathon. And this pandemic has been that way. We've been in this thing ever since March. Can you believe that? Amen. And so we have to know how to go the distance in life with certain things. The Bible said we count them happy, which endure. Haven't you seen and heard of the patience of Job? Amen. That in the end, God blessed them with what? Twice as much. It's a tremendous word called long distance runner can be yours for twelve ninety five, as well as the book. A death, a need to understand It's only five dollars, but it'll be a good book. Shout out to all of NOLCC. A shout out to Chris, Kristen Bryant. Shout out to you, uh, uh, Kristen Brown tonight. A shout out to you, as well as a shout out to Vincent Bellamy and your lovely wife, Evangelist Jackie Bellamy. Appreciate knowing that you all are watching. Mother Evangeline Whitaker and uh, Rachel Moses, Brianna Moses and Lorenzo Moses. Shout out to all of you as well as Shante Moses. Appreciate all of you that are watching tonight. Shout out to Wanda Brown and your watch party. Prophetess Mary Fleming, uh, Linda Brinson. Good to know you're watching. Amen. As well as uh, Bobby Gaston and Brother S. Shout out to you, Brother S. Amen. Just so many of you that watch us faithfully and committed to the things of God, and we appreciate that. Let's have a word of prayer and go into tonight's word. Shout out to uh, Deacon Dennis and Vanita. Amen. Shout out to you as well as your lovely daughters. Let's pray right now. Father, thank you for the wisdom, the enlightenment, the strategic words that you got for us tonight that will elevate us all in the kingdom of God. We pronounce blessings over your people in Jesus name. Amen and amen. All right. Let's go right into it because we said that the devil is afraid of your amazing future. He's afraid of what? Not your past, not your present, but your amazing future. You need to just put that down somewhere at the bottom of your screen and type in, I have an amazing future. That's right. Something big, something bold, and something beautiful is about to happen in your life. And that should be every last one of us. That should be our expectation. Because I believe that what you expect to happen and believe God to do in your life begins to be attracted towards you and you begin to attract, amen, the resources, the revenue and everything else that you need based on your attitude and based on your expectation. Hope deferred maketh the heart sick, but a good word maketh it glad. So your future is what? Big. Bold and beautiful. I call them the three B's. Big, bold, and beautiful. All right, let's go to Galatians 4 and 7, and we're going to read this to you in the contemporary English version. It says, you are no longer slaves. You are God's children. So we're no longer under the abundance of the law. We're no longer under, amen, the law of Moses. We're under the grace of God and the truth of God that has been made available to us through Jesus Christ. Jesus made it possible for man to be redeemed. He made it possible for man to be heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. He made it possible for you and I to sit together with him in heavenly places. He made it possible for you and I to be justified, to be declared righteous in God's sight. All right. Now it says you are God's children and you will be given what he has promised. What will we be given? What God has promised. Well, what did God promise us? He promised us that in blessings, he would bless us. And in multiplying, he would multiply us. He promised us that we, as the seed of Abraham, we will begin to have a life of favor. God told Abraham, get thee out from among your country and among your kindred. And go into a land 
which I will show thee. And of course, God gave him the land and he was able, amen, to live a prosperous, victorious life because of a covenant that was made with him. Now, you and I have a what? Covenant that has been made with us, not based on our righteousness, not based on our holiness, but based on Jesus Christ. And because we belong to Christ, we are now heirs of God and we're now the seed of Abraham, thereby entitling us to the promise that God made to Abraham. So God has some land with your name on it, some property with your name on it. Now, remember, oftentimes something can be right around you, but because you're not focused on it or you don't have it in your mind or in your soul that it belongs to you, then you won't be able to see it and you won't be able to pick up on it. You hear what I just said? I said you won't be able to see it and you won't be able to pick up on it. There is uh, something in the human brain. They call it uh, our, I call it RAS. It's called ret reticular, reticular activating system. That's your reticular activating system. And that's the part of your brain that begins to pick up whatever you focus on. An example of that would be when you get a car. Haven't you noticed when you buy a new car, as before those same cars been driving around, riding around, same kind, same color, but you didn't notice it. Soon as you got your car, or as soon as you decide about getting a car like that, all of a sudden you start noticing and seeing that car everywhere. Now, it wasn't that that car wasn't there before. It's now because you have focused on it. Now your brain picks it up and notices and shows it to you every time you see it. Hallelujah. There's a woman of God in our church, uh, Sister Teresa. I remember when she got this car called the Flex. And it's a, uh, a unique shaped car. And it was like before she got that car, I didn't notice it anywhere. But once she got that car, it's like I start seeing that car everywhere. Amen. When my wife and I, before we got our Hemi, we have a 2006 Hemi. Amen. Before we got that Hemi, I remember uh, a school teacher Mr. Earl Miller was the first person I really noticed that we both noticed had a car like that. And Mr. Miller, we talked to him about the car and asked him how he liked the car. He talked about how much he liked that Hemi 300. And uh, but once we got that car and once we saw Mr. Miller with that car and we bought that car, it's like we start seeing that car everywhere. Now we see it everywhere. Why? Because of the brain being wired a certain way. Shout out to Carl White tonight. Glad to know you're watching. Shirley Williams, Lodorius, uh, Yvette Whitaker is watching, and Danny McDonald. Good to know that you all are watching us tonight. All right. So let's look at some other scripture. I'm going to go to the book of Job. Let's look at the book of Job here. As we're talking to you about owning property and starting businesses, Job chapter 8. And we're going to look at it in the International Children's Bible. Job chapter 8 and verse 7. Amen. Hallelujah. A shout out also to Carl White, uh, to your husband, Chug. Amen. Hope Chug is watching. We call him Chug. Amen. Uh, wonderful, wonderful man of God. All right. All right. It says this. The place you begin will seem unimportant because your future will be so successful. Isn't that powerful? The place you begin will seem unimportant. That's why the Bible said in Job 8 and verse 7, though your beginning is small, your latter end should greatly increase. God is a God who wants to increase us. Remember what we said this year is all about. God increasing us more and more. According to Psalms 115 verses 14 and 15. 
And if you've been watching us at all, I hope I've quoted that scripture so much to you all that it has become a part of your DNA now, part of your system now. Psalms 115 verses 14 and 15 says, the Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. Ye are blessed of the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Hallelujah. Isn't that powerful? And even verse 16 out of that same uh, chapter, Psalm 115, it says the heavens, even the heavens are the Lord, but he has given the earth to the children of men. So the earth is our place of dominion and power and might that God wants us to demonstrate his awesomeness so that we can cause earth to look like heaven. Hallelujah. And, that, and we can only do that as we submit to God. But God wants our future to be so successful that it will cause us to never despise the day of small things because we know that anything great has started out small. Most of the things that you see are big and bold and beautiful today started out small and insignificant, but they didn't finish that way. And that's how your life is supposed to be. We're supposed to continually move forward looking at our future. Now, Satan wants us to get entrapped and ensnared with something negative in our past to get held up by a negative experience and we get locked in and, and get stagnated there instead of moving from glory to glory and from faith to faith. Look at Psalms one verses one, two and three. One through three says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sit it in the seat of the scornful. Watch this. But his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Now, because we are meditating in God's law day and night, listen at what it says. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Now, doesn't that sound like God has a big, a bold, and a beautiful future for us? Of course it does. So God wants us to own property and start businesses. Again now, he wants this so bad that some of us can even buy businesses. A lot of times people get old, they have started businesses, and they just want somebody to take over that business. I remember the, 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 the uh, movie that Tyler Perry put out called Daddy Little Girls. One of my uh, uh, favorite movies that he put out called Daddy Little Girls. Daddy's Little Girls. And on the end of that program, a business was given to the guy. Amen. Lou Gossett gave this guy the business. Why? Because he was getting too old. And that was a black owned business. So we understand that it is the will of God for us to see black people own business, white people own business, Hispanic people own business. However, oftentimes we only see white people own business. Now, what how does that inspire and help us who are black? It's hard sometimes to be inspired when you don't see someone of your own color doing what you may be desiring to do. It helped me out tremendously years ago because years ago when I first started, when I got saved and got filled with the Holy Ghost and everything else, God revealed to me that one day I would be on television, that I would write books. But at that time here in our local area, no one that I knew of was on television. No one that I knew of in our local area had written books, but yet I knew God said that to me. But thank God, amen, that I was living at 1417 Huffines Avenue years ago. And I'll never forget when I turned my television on and I saw this black man that a, a young man that had told me about. He was telling me about this man, uh, Dr. Kid, uh, Frederick K.C. Price. 
And I never forget when uh, my neighbor who was saved had told me about him and I turned my television on and saw him. It inspired me. Why? Because I'd already seen Copeland. I'd already seen Shambach. And of course, because we are brothers in Christ and we know it's not about the outward appearance, but it's about the heart. But at the same time, I went to another level of inspiration when I saw, amen, Frederick Casey Price. Why? Because I know that he probably ran into some of the same obstacles that I would run into as a black man that would be totally different from somebody who may have been white. So we have to understand, that's why later on in this teaching, we're going to talk to you about game-changing people and, and motivators and all that. But let's go into these 13 keys to successful business. We're going to hit them real fast so we can get to this information. We said the first key to successful business is God's voice. The second key to successful business, now again, it's, only, it's not just work with a business, it works with your life too. Because really, you are a business. Really, you are called to sell yourself. Really, you are called to be an ambassador for Jesus Christ. And so God wants your life to be a trophy for him, to be a masterpiece for him. God wants your life to be out front, leading the way, being a catalyst, being a pioneer in many, many different ways. So you're not just sitting back waiting to be victimized by life, but you're moving forward, ready to walk in the victory that has been purchased for you and I through the blood of Jesus Christ, through his flesh being beaten, that you and I might reign in life as kings. We're kings and we're priests unto God. So we have to understand that God wants us to move forward in life. He's not a God who wants us to look back. Paul said, forgetting those things which are behind me. This one thing I do, I reach forth unto those things which are before me. So now the third key, the first key is successful business is God's voice. Second key to successful business is demand, supply and demand. There must be a demand for whatever you are called to sell, whatever you're producing. The third key to successful business is self-development and self-improvement. We spent a lot of time talking about that because your attitude is so important. You, you can mess up a lot of open doors or you can open up a lot of doors for you based on your attitude, based on you treating people right, based on your growth, based on your development. God can offer you a lot of things and declare a lot of things that are going to happen for you but you have to grow into them, develop into them. It's all about being before you ever get or have. God wants you to become something first. It's all about being. For in him I live, move, and have my being. The fourth key to successful business, we said, is excellence. You want to do everything you do with the spirit of excellence. That means you always keep improving, improving, improving. The fifth key to successful business is efficiency. You want to master and make the most out of your time. It has been said maturity comes when you stop making excuses and start making changes. That's important. If you're going to be efficient at anything in life, you must not be one who make excuses. Many people will never be as efficient and effective in life because they continually make excuses. Well, why, why, why you didn't come to church today? Why didn't you get, I ain't have nobody pick me up, I ain't have no ride. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. How do you get to mall and other places? How do you get to work? How do you get these other places, but it seems like you can't get to the house of God? In other words, people always can find an excuse for why they can't do something, but yet what they really want to do they don't have that same excuse about doing. Amen. So if you really want to get to the house of God, you really want to be there. There's a way to do it. Did you call anybody? No. Well, did you really try to call brother so-and-so that night before and tell him I need a ride to the house of God? Do you tell somebody to come pick you by up on the church van or on the church bus? 
No. Well, stop making excuses. The real reason why you missed the service is you really didn't want to be there. We have to stop making lame excuses for not being successful or not achieving in life. Hallelujah. I'm from a little town called Tarboro. But my wife and I, we refuse to let Tarboro define us or box us in. Here, here I am in Tarboro, glory to God, in this small city called Tarboro, written 10 books on several TV stations. Amen. Our local church owned property. Amen. My wife and I, we own property, our own home here. Amen. And been on national and international television. Amen. From Tarboro, North Carolina, this small city, this, this, I mean, we only have, uh, you can ride around our city and within 15 minutes, you out of the city, you out of the city. Amen. Probably less than that. Amen. Whereas Greensboro, where my daughter lives or New York somewhere, amen, it takes you hours to, you, you, in the, you, you still in New York and you've been riding around for an hour. Amen. Why? That, those are major cities. Tarboro is a small town, small city. But yet we believe that we're not limited based on our city because there's a God who we trust. There's a God who's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to Ephesians 3 and 20. In fact, our television broadcast is called God is able. It's based on Ephesians 3 and 20 because God said to me, one of our many assignments for our city is to get people to think big and to dream big. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. The sixth key to successful business is profit and reward, profit and reward. You always understand that you're not in this to go down economically. You have to see profit, profiting. God teaches us how to make profit. Being saved is about profiting. If you're not saved, you're not profiting in life. Why? Because one day you're going to die. And if you die without knowing Jesus, all is vanity and vexation of the spirit. Why? Because you're going to die and go to the lake of fire. You're going to die and go to hell and lose your soul. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? So you and I have to understand that business is all about profit and reward. The seventh key to successful business is honesty and integrity. If you're going to do business, be honest, be honest, be upright. Tell the truth to your clients. Don't lie to get the deal. Don't lie to get their business. Don't don't charge a man one price for certain people and then another price for another people. No, make it fair. Amen. My book, this right here book, I am my brother's keep is ten dollars, whether you're black, whether you're white whether you're rich, whether you're poor. Amen. See, you don't, you don't do dishonest dealings and expect to have a successful business. Crooks always get caught. Crooks always will end up failing. The Bible says righteousness exalted a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Our nation suffers when the ungodly and unrighteous men are in authority. That's why we're challenging you to vote, to vote. That's right. I said it. You need to vote. Why? Vote those evil, corrupt senators out. Vote those evil, corrupt governors out. Vote those evil, corrupt presidents out. And get those who you believe, amen, will do righteous and do upright things with people. Because we don't want people running our nation who are corrupt, who are dishonest, and who lack integrity. Who lack integrity. We don't want that to happen. 
Shout out to Donald Davis. Thank you for watching tonight. Amen. The eight key to successful business, we said, is saving and investing. That's right. Anytime when you have a business, if you want your business to make it, you have to save and then invest in the products that you are buying or the products that you are selling. You have to save and invest. The ninth key to successful business is passive income. We talked about how that you want to get to the place where what you're doing is creating wealth, is creating income for you, even in your sleep, without you going out having to work as hard and do the things that you normally do. Amen. Think about it. People who retire. What is retirement? Retirement is you getting what I, what I call really a passive income because you're not going out like you used to. And yet you have money coming in. And that's why it's important for you and I, amen, to set up our retirement. And it's important those of you that are watching me tonight who have leaders or pastors that you not know, amen, again, that a lot of pastors and leaders, amen, they don't have a retirement plan set up. I've seen people, amen, when people get old, kick their pastor out like he or she is nothing, like he or she, now you're too old. Here come this young book. Here come this young man. Here come this young woman. And now people want her or him to preach because why? He can go get it. He can, he can do it. And now the older pastor, amen, is out there struggling, is out there without. That shouldn't be the case. You should look out for the elderly all the way around our nation, our country should look out for anybody. Your mother who's old, you should care enough to make sure that mama is not missing a meal, that mama is being taken care of. The elderly cannot be overlooked. And that's why it's stupid to hear our governors and presidents talking about cutting back on Social Security programs, cutting back from the elderly. No way. These men and women can't help that they have lived, amen, out long, lived longer than society may have wanted them to live. Amen. There are a lot of people who don't want you to live a long time. They want you to die. But I refuse to die young. God said he would satisfy me with long life. And I expect to live a long time. I expect to see my children's children grow up and develop. Amen. If I obey God and do what he told me to do, then he has assigned angels to my life. He has divine protection over my life and he will keep that which I commit unto him. Hallelujah. The 10th key to successful business and we're dealing with 10, 11 and, and, and uh, 12 and 13 a little bit tonight, a little bit more. The 10th key to successful business is establish and market your brand. I can't say enough about that because a lot of people think that whenever they bring out a product or whenever they start a business, they just think it's automatically going to be talked about and heard of, heard of. No, you can't just tell about your stuff to your little five family members and think the word is going to get out. You must use everything that's available to you to make sure that what you are about, especially if you're a Christian, because Satan doesn't want Christian businesses to succeed. He doesn't want anything that relates to the kingdom of God to do well. Why? Because it is a slap in his face whenever we do well as believers. Because he, his job is to steal, kill, and destroy, to hinder us, to try to stop us from being successful. Because again, nothing we do gives any honor and glory to him. Everything we do brings glory and honor to God. Whatever we do, we do it heartily as unto the Lord, knowing that of the Lord we shall receive a great reward. Shout out to Donald Davis. Glad to know you're watching tonight. Amen. So Mark Twain said many a small thing has been made a large thing by the right kind of advertising. Amen. Listen, you got to advertise what you're doing. And there are a lot. Listen at this. There are a lot of radio stations and other things that would give you free advertising that you can uh, get up there 
and and we, we, we went, I think, at our local church one time, we tried to get a committee together that would put our stuff out on radio stations and everything. But people are just lazy, too laid back. They're not aggressive enough. And uh, they are passive about uh, stuff you give them. So a lot of times they drop the ball. But you have to understand that that there are, uh, what's that, that radio station out of Raleigh called uh, the, light. the Light. If you put certain things on that, amen, you can, they, they'll do it for free. Uh, uh, WCPS, uh, 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 a lot of these other radio stations. If you get your announcements in at a certain time, two weeks before the uh, program or the thing take place, then guess what? They will advertise it for you free of charge. That's a way of getting things out. Amen. Yeah. Uh, certain cable channels. You can put your church announcements up there free of charge. That's and, but, and we try to get people to do that. I mean, just people don't take advantage of trying to put stuff out. But bad news. Let some bad happen. Let some wicked happen. They run that mouth. I don't care. You have. See, that's the carnal mind. Believers got to do better. The world system, people who do corrupt stuff, they get their stuff out there. They advertise it. They put it out there. They make sure that you know about where the party at, where the jam at, where the disco at. Amen. They put flyers out. They do what it takes. Christian people act like, because God is supposed to be behind it. It's supposed to happen automatically. That's how a lot of people live their life. I'm saved. And you say, all right, you saved. All right, God going to provide. He's going to give me some money. You say, wait a minute. You got a job? No, but God going to make a way. See, that's stupidity. That's stupidity. Paul said, if a man don't work, he ought not eat. This is in your Bible. So God is saying that our eating is supplied by our working. Paul was saying, in other words, don't give this stuff to lazy people who want to sit back, do nothing and have what they need. That's what that's that, that can be the danger of the welfare system. The welfare system is a system and it's necessary to help people out that may be struggling with with with, with, with raising kids and everything else. I'm not against it, but at the same time, it is not. To be misused by those who are saying, I don't want to get a job because if I get a job, they'll take me off welfare. I don't want to succeed because if I succeed, then the government won't take care of me. That's not what you should do with that system. If you are strong, if you have an able body, if you have an able mind, you should seek to be employed. You should seek to get a job. You should seek to work. Because you release your potential through working. Hallelujah. And God gave man a job or uh, something to do before he even gave him a wife. And when the wife came along, she helped him. She was the one that was fit or suitable to help him get it done. Shout out to Stanley Clark. Good to know you're watching tonight. Amen. Now listen at this. Dewana Witted. She gave this acronym for PUSH, P-U-S-H. Listen at this, what it means. P stands for promote. U stands for until. S stands for sales. And H stands for happen. Promote until sales happen. Glory to God. I like that. You promote until sales happen. McDonald's, in spite of all the burgers they've sold, why do they still make commercials? Because why? They're promoting until some more sales happen. Burger King, in spite of all those Whoppers and Whopper Juniors they've sold, they still make commercials. Why? Because they know that if you put it before men's eyes, put it before men's ears, put it before men's uh, eye and ear gate, eventually it's going to get into their spirit and they're going to go out and buy something from them. The Super Bowl, as I said to you before, charge on no how much money per commercial. That's only 30 seconds or a minute. But they understand how many millions of people are going to be watching that Super Bowl. So they invest millions in the commercial or in that advertisement 
to get you to watch it. Again, most commercials, they have it fit so that whenever you're watching a program, when that commercial comes on, watch how loud your television goes up. The volume shifts. Why? They're getting you to look and stare. You either got to go turn it down or you got to look and see what that commercial is all about. That's the way they get you. It is indeed strategically done because they know that through advertising their product, they're going to create more sales. When people don't know you exist and don't know what you're doing, how can they find out about it? Even Jesus said through the Apostle Paul, how can they hear except there be a preacher? How can he preach except he be sent? But before he even said all that, he said, how can they be saved if they haven't even heard? They won't know about it if there's no preacher out here talking about it. So we have to preach the word and preach about Jesus so they can know about Jesus. They don't know about Jesus automatically. We got to be out here talking about Jesus. And as we talk about Jesus, people get saved and give their heart to Jesus. Hallelujah. Shout out to Minnie Bullock. Glad to know you're watching tonight. You and your husband as well. Hope you're watching. All right. Now, the 11th thing, the 11th key to successful business, we said, is smart, intelligent, skillful, and competent people who can run the business without you being present. You got to have people that you help train and help develop who are smart, who are intelligent, who are competent, who can run the business without you being there. Amen. That's how we do with the ministry. We get smart, intelligent. Thank God for the smart, intelligent and competent people at newness of life. Amen. That can run the ministry while my wife and I may be preaching in another city or in another state. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because a lot of times people want us to come to their church on Sunday morning when all of their main people can be there and uh, hear us minister the word of God. So newness of life, they sacrifice us and we go out and minister while they run the run the uh, ministry at newness of life. Thank God for all of them. Amen. The great people. Amen. Amen. The 12th key. To, I, mean, I want to say something at this. We said at first your business will be very demanding. A lot of people try to go into business. They don't know that at first your business is very demanding of your time, of your presence. But as time goes on, others will assist you with their talents and skills. Remember, if you got a talent, if you got a skill, don't go to any business and want to sit down on it. Put it to work. Help that ministry grow. Help that business be successful. I used to tell people when I worked at Consolidated Diesel, I said, if we send out bad engines, then the company is not going to do well. We then will be laid off. So I want a good product to go out. They would say, Van, send that engine on down because I used to work in an area called test where we would test the engines. And I said, I can't send that engine out. You got to put the uh, oil pan on it. Fix that. There's a dent in that oil pan. You got to put a new oil pan on or you got to fix it up. They say, oh man, just send the engine. I said, no, you can't do that. Why? Because you keep sending out bad products. They're going to lose contracts. When they lose those contracts with those businesses, guess what eventually they're going to do? Cut back on employees. And all of a sudden, you're going to be out of a job. Because why? These businesses are are not there just because they like you. They're in business to make a profit. The moment they are not making a profit, they're going to cut back on employees. You're going to be fired. You're going to be laid off. Why? Because the product is no longer selling. And you messed up the product because you didn't care about what you were sending out. You got to always care about what you're sending out. I remember years ago working at McDonald's. I was a young boy in school and I worked as a summer job. I worked one time at McDonald's. And I never forget when you're working at McDonald's, you can be in a hurry trying to fix those uh, Big Macs or fix those quarter pounders. 
And I don't remember whether it was a Big Mac or a quarter pounder, but the bun fell on the floor. You know, the bun that you put on top fell on the floor or the meat patty fell on the floor. And I never forget, I took that thing and threw it in the trash can. Little did I know that the supervisor was behind me and they tapped me on the back and they said, way they go van. I'm glad you didn't put that out there and try to dust it off or something. She said, because I've seen so many people do that. See, that's wicked. That's not caring about your customer. If you know that bun fell on the floor, floor that, that, that uh, patty fell on the floor, that beef patty, you don't and put it out there like, hey, they eating it, I ain't. That's wicked. Is that co- that's corrupt. Hallelujah. You got to treat this thing like you want it to do well. Because the moment uh, they hear about McDonald's is sending out dirty meat patties or dirty burgers or, amen, there are rats or roaches all over the place, guess what? They're going to cause you to lose your job or McDonald's going to go out of business and people won't be employed. Amen. The 12th key to successful business, we said, is being a good negotiator. You got to know how to negotiate. You got to learn how to talk and get things at a price that is a win-win situation for both parties. You win and they win. You are not messed over and they are not being messed over. If you don't negotiate about your car, you are making a terrible mistake. You shouldn't go to that car dealership and pay that sticker price. Why? Automatically know they got that price jacked up. Automatically know that they got something on that price that you don't need. And you got to learn how to negotiate. You got to learn how to talk with that person and get it within your price range. If you only I mean, my wife and I, we, we, we decided about every car we've ever bought. We'll say, now, look. We're not going over so much a month. Why? Because we want to still be a tither. We want to still have money to give when we need to give. That means you got to negotiate. They can work and get a car and get it within your price range. Don't fool all that stuff and they stand there acting like they punching stuff and all that. When they let me go talk to my manager and all that stuff. Amen. Hallelujah. You got to say, hey, well, you need to go back and talk to your manager again. Why? Because I'm willing to walk away. If it's not within my price range, I'm willing. I don't want your product so bad that I'm willing to forfeit being able to pay tithe, being able to give offering, being able to take care of my family. No, I will let that car or let that product stay on the shelf. Let that car stay out there on the parking lot. Hey, because I drove up in one and I can drive out in the same one. You see, you got to have negotiating power and you got to know how to negotiate in life or else you're never going to be successful in business. Sometimes you have to cut the middleman out because sometimes stuff is high because there's a middleman. Sometimes you got to go straight to the person and buy the product and cut that middleman out because sometimes that middleman is causing stuff to be high. I remember when my wife and I bought our Cadillac, the gentleman told us, he said, look, with Van, when you go to the Cadillac place, talk to the owner. No, don't talk to the salespeople because a lot of times they're in the middle and they got to have a cut. They doing this. Cut them out. Go right straight to the owner. That's what the gentleman told me. He gave me the, the owner name, gave me the number, said, you tell them that I sent you. Amen. There was a white gentleman that was a friend of mine. And we did that and save on how much money on the Cadillac that we now own and, is, you know, paid for and all that. So you got to be a good news. The 13th key to successful business is be thankful to God. Be thankful to God for be thankful to God and be thankful for all your help. Thank those people who help you. We constantly appreciate and that's why all the time you can see me giving a shout out to Newness of Life Christian Center. In every book I've written, I've written 12. In every book I've written, Spiritual Upgrade, no matter what they are, I always give thanks to my wife, to my daughter, amen, 
to newness of life Christian center because I understand that it is good help around me that makes what I do possible. We have a team of good people. We have a planning committee. We have a hospitality committee. We have ushers. We have deacons. We have elders. We have, amen. Yeah, phone tree. We have people around us that help us get it done. You cannot do business and think that you can do it by yourself. You need a network. Your network will increase your net worth. If you get the right team together, thank that team. Give honor to that thing, that team. A lot of times before I minister anywhere, the first thing I say at the beginning of the message, when I go and minister in any, any, any church, I say, I give honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Give honor to God who's often the finisher of my faith and all that. Then I say, I thank God for my lovely wife. Then I thank God for newness of life Christian center. Before I say a, anything and tell them to open up the Bible. Why do I do that? Because I'm letting people know that I didn't get here by myself. You don't get at the top. You don't go from glory to glory by yourself. God allowed Jesus in Luke 2 and 52 to grow in favor with God and man. You need the favor of God, but you also need the help of man. God, again, has given the earth to the children of men. Shout out to Pete Rock. Glad to know you're watching tonight. Amen. Thank God for you. Keep watching us, Pete. Keep watching us, Stanley Clark. Keep watching us. Amen. Because I'm telling you, we have impartation to give to you. And what we're telling you, again, about successful business, these 13 keys are not only keys to the business, it's keys that you can operate and, and bring about success in your own personal life. This works whether you got a business or not. Now, we're going to give you some motivators and some game changers. I want you to write down some of these real quick that will help you in being a success in life. These are men and women who are successful, who have achieved a level of success because you got to understand that iron sharpened iron. You got to understand that first Corinthians, the 15th chapter and verse 33 says this. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. In other words, your life will either rise or fall based on your associations. If you associate with people who ain't going nowhere, with people who are broke, busted and disgusted, with people who all they want to do is argue and fight and fuss and complain. You will be like them. You have to decide that I'm willing, Lord, to let you change my friends in order to change my destination. I'm willing to let you change my friends in order to change my purpose in life. Glory to God. That's true. Amen. Your good help is your network. Your good help is your network. That's right. Your good help. You need your good help. To be your network. You need good people around you. You need good people around you. I said you need good people around you. Huh? I'm telling you, if you want to stop doing crack, you got to get away from the crack people. You got to cut all those who love to do crack, all those who love to do beer, all those who love to drink wine. You got to cut all of those people out of your life. Get rid of your, those, those people like that. I guarantee your life will go to another level. The people around you are either hindering you, bringing your life down, or they are helping raise your level of growth, maturity, and development. You decide who you allow to be a part of your inner circle. And some people may want to be a part of your life, a part of your inner circle, but you got to recognize they don't have the same mindset. They don't have the same attitude. They don't have the same hunger. They don't have the same desires. See, what do y'all have in common? Communion. Cornelia. Fellowship. The Bible said what fellowship has light with darkness? What communion? What agreement 
hath Christ with Belial. Christ and the devil ain't on the same page. They ain't on the same team. The Bible tells you and I be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. If that person that you want to marry, if they're unsaved and don't want to go to the house of God, what are you doing with them? Why are you with them? Why are they in your life? They can't help you. They can't help you get better, be better, have better. They are hindrance to you. They are what the Bible call spots in your feast. They're going to mess up what you're trying to become. They're going to mess up who you're trying to become. They're going to hinder what you're trying to do. Unsaved men shouldn't be dating or being with saved women. Saved, unsaved women shouldn't be with saved men. You should want somebody saved, somebody born again. I just tell my daughter that. I said, look, is the guy saved? Amen. I don't, I don't care about his ways in his hair. I don't care about the curls in his hair. I don't care about no beard, no mustache. I don't care about you trying to put that stuff on Facebook or anything else. I ain't stunned that. You have to answer the question, are they saved? Why? Because your mother and father wants you to have somebody saved. Because if you have somebody saved, it's easy for you to stay saved. It's easy for you to go the right way. But you don't need to have somebody in your life who want to drink a beer when trouble hit, who want to cuss at you, who want to hit you, who want to do those negative things. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. If that person that used to date not killed somebody, you better be glad it didn't kill you. Let them go to prison. At least they went to prison. Let them go. Oh, I want them. They go to prison. They killed somebody. They supposed to go to prison. What you think? They, they supposed to go to jail. They killed a man. Oh, but what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I love them. I got children by them. Your children going to be okay. Raise them in the admonition of the Lord. Let that man go to prison and hopefully maybe he gets saved in there, but it's a blessing he didn't kill you because they get mad enough to kill somebody out there. They could have killed you in that home. Well, let me get this little points on about this motivator and game changer. All right. Let me give you a few of these. Amen. I won't give you all that I ever got, but just a few of mine I'm giving to you. Les Brown. Y'all heard of Les Brown. Les Brown will fire you up. He talks about being hungry. Sydney Trim. Sydney Trim is a, a, a powerful woman of God, saved, filled with the Holy Ghost. Lisa Nichols. Lisa Nichols, I talk about her in my, uh, give some quotes by her in this book called Women of Substance, Taking New Steps to New Dimensions. I mean, just off the chain, young lady. Amen. Eric Thomas. Eric Thomas. Uh, Marcus Johnson. He knows that's one that we uh, a gentleman that we like to be inspired by. He motiv he'll motivate you real good. Jim Rohn. Jim Rohn. He's a white gentleman, but he can motivate. He's one of uh, uh, my favorite guys that I listen to. Amen. About self-development, about you being everything that you need to be. Brian Tracy. Brian Tracy. Another gentleman that does absolutely great stuff. Lynn Richardson. Lynn Richardson, a young lady, black young lady I like to hear. Dan Locke, author of a book called Unlock It, The Master Key to Wealth, Success, and Significant. A tremendous guy. Robert Kawasaki, he's the author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Now, a lot of people don't know this other one I'm going to give you. Robert F. Smith. Robert F. Smith, a multimillionaire black man that a lot of people don't even know about. Again, see, I'm trying to tell you about some of these because a lot of times you need to know and know how these people think. And you can go on YouTube and listen at some of their stuff and get in, get in that same kind of mindset. But more importantly, we know the ultimate goal is to be like Jesus because it don't matter how much money you got, what kind of car you drive, what kind of house you live in. If you lose your soul, you messed up. Amen. Warren Buffett, y'all know him, Warren Buffett, amen, Benjamin Graham, he was the mentor of Warren Buffett, Benjamin Graham, he mentored Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger is the business partner of Warren Buffett, he's a self-made billionaire, amen, Holton Buggs, net worth is over $200 million, 
Ray Dalio, a self-made billionaire. Jeremy Gucci, Napoleon Hill. Napoleon Hill does a lot of great teaching about development and all kinds of good stuff. J. Paul Getty wrote the book of How to Be Rich. Uh, e, uh, Evan Carmichael, he has a lot of these people on his particular program. If you go on YouTube, at, look, type in Evan Carmichael, you'll see him up there interviewing Oprah Winfrey, amen, and other people like Denzel Washington, all these kind of people, and getting the success principles that they have. Oftentimes, they do the 10 rules of success, and they give out 10 little principles that are usually in line with Scripture. They just don't quote the scripture. They don't know the scripture, but you and I know the word of God. And we know that the Bible said this book of the law shall not depart out of our mouth, but you you shall meditate in it day and night and whatsoever you do will prosper. All right. Grant Cardone. He's another one. Amen. To have those kind of program. Dave Coggins. Bob Proctor. Bob Proctor. Amen. Does a lot of good teaching. Amen. About self-development and growing up and being all that you need to be. A lot of you heard of Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey does some good teaching about finances, about how to budget your money, how to save money, how to invest money. Dave Ramsey has even have a curriculum where teach people about how to get out of debt and how to be debt free. But I'm telling you, in line with Dave Ramsey, there's a lady called Risa Nestor Sharp who is going to be up here on Sunday morning at 1015. And I'm telling you, if you really want to find out about organization and budgeting your money, she's going to be here at 1015 Sunday morning on Facebook Live. Come on, saints. Amen. You need to watch her. You need to watch this lady named Risa Nesta Sharp. She's going to help you out. You can go back over our, our, our thing about big dreams and budgeting that I've taught and then she's taught on Facebook Live. Go back over this stuff. Listen at it again and again because we, we try to teach you from where you are. Amen. We're not trying to teach you what to, to, to get to that billionaire status. We're just trying to teach people how to get out of this debt that they in right here in this area in Tarboro, Rocky Mount, Wilson, and, and just how to start small and end up big. How to start with a little bit and taking it and using it effectively. She's going to teach you very practical stuff. Plus, I have a track called How to Budget Your Money God's Way that we'll send it out to you absolutely free of charge. All you got to do is give us your address and we'll get this out to you. No charge. And you'd be surprised how many people won't even get that. That Because they ain't serious about getting out of debt. Amen. And then they always want an excuse. I need a better job. My job ain't paying me enough. I don't care how much your job paying you. If you got more going out than you got coming in, you in a mess. The goal is to get more coming in than you got going out. That's the goal. That's why you put yourself on a budget. Our church has a budget. My wife and I function in life by budget. If you don't understand budgeting, you will make a mess of a whole lot of money. You will waste a whole lot of money. So you need to watch Pastor Reese. This Sunday morning at 1015 is going to be powerful. Amen. And we're going to give as many weeks and, and days or months as she needs because I want people to come out of this mess. Amen. It's a mess going on. All right. There's also a, 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 a program where called David Never Sleeps. And he has a lot of uh, great thinkers and billionaire thinkers on his program. Joe Polish Genius Network. Uh, Daniel Alley, uh, Jonathan E. Green, he was a computer engineer who stepped out and now he's doing stuff. Amen. That's supernatural. He turned over two million dollars from a business in his own home. Jonathan E. Green. You ought to hear this guy's testimony It's powerful. Amen. All right. Now, remember, a leader spreads hope and not fear. What did I say? A leader spreads what? Hope and not fear. If you are a leader, you're serious. You need to watch and get motivated and stirred and keep moving by these people and stop hanging around these negative, pessimistic people who are not trying to go nowhere, who are not trying to get anything done, who don't want their own house, who don't want to own and pay off their car. You got to get around with around the people. Y'all heard of Kevin O'Leary, Mark Cuban, Damon, John, Robert, Herjavec, 
uh, Lori, Greener, Barbara, uh, Cochran. These are people that on what? The Shark Tank. Uh, these y'all, you, I'm telling you, they got success keys that you can watch. Amen. I like Apostle Frederick K.C. Price, Norva Hayes, Terry Savelle Foy. Listen at me, ladies. If you a lady, listen at that young lady. Now, her voice sounds a little squeaky and everything else, but Terry Savelle Foy can teach you about bringing your dream to pass, can teach you about principles that will help you get ahead in life. She's Jerry Savelle's daughter, and she, amen, is real, real good. I like listening to her. Jerry Savelle, Jerry Savelle, y'all know this guy, Bishop T.D. Jakes, amen. He does a lot of good teaching. In fact, I got his book. I've shown it to you several times here on this uh, Facebook Live called Soar. So it is a book that he wrote intentionally to the business community. And you can think about this man of God uh, shares his thinking and his strategies to major companies. So, you know, if they're reaching out for it, the Christian community should also salute him and honor him and respect him for it. Amen. Uh, Miles Monroe, you know, Miles Monroe now, uh, him and his wife, of course, they died in a plane crash. But his teachings are still on YouTube. And uh, that that man was a brilliant thinker. Amen. I have a lot of his books about leadership and uh, the Holy Spirit and all kinds of stuff. Miles Monroe, David Ibiyami, that that that's a millionaire. Amen. That's right. A multimillionaire. Amen. Man of God who spirit feel who uh, does a lot of good teaching. Y'all heard of Michael Jordan. There's, he gives some of his success keys. Kobe Bryant, of course. Amen. A lot of uh, Magic Johnson, Shaq. These people share their success strategies with you. They're, they're thinking what you want. You don't want their money. What you need is their thinking. It's a certain way you think. It's a certain mindset. Poverty, amen, can be smitten down, removed from your life if you change the way you think. Changing the way you think turns you into a whole nother person. Amen. Bill Winston. He's, of course, real good. Joyce Myers, uh, Gloria Copeland, uh, Marilyn Hickey. See, some of them I ain't put up there. I'm just naming them off the top of my head. Amen. Van Sharp. Amen. Bishop Ronald Wayne Sharp. They're great men of God. Amen. That are teaching success principles so you can learn, grow and maneuver. These are motivators because there are times when you got a vision, you gonna have to stay motivated. You have to stay on fire. You have to stay moving forward. Thank you for watching this. I appreciate it. We talked about what? Owning property and starting businesses. We gave you 11, 11 uh, segments of this, and I hope and pray that they bless your life. Thank you for watching. We appreciate you so much. Now, I want to say some things before I get ready to close. Again, I want to remind you, if you don't have our latest two books, remember, leaders read. Don't fool yourself. Every last one of these men and women that I named to you, I guarantee you one of their number one strategies for their success is reading. All of them, male and female, are adamant readers. Stop being lazy and stop sitting in front of that television watching stuff to entertain you or stop just getting on those uh, games and playing games with your life. You need to get you a good book in your hand. And here's a good one called Long Distance Runner. Subjects in here like renewing, running with a renewed mind, running with the team, running with responsibility. That whole chapter is powerful because a lot of people are irresponsible. And, and remember, one irresponsible man male or female, that I'm talking about when I say man, amen, makes things harder for every responsible man. Every responsible man suffers at the expense of someone who's irresponsible. Do you not know that? Amen. If you let your car go back and you file for bankruptcy, it didn't just hurt you, it hurt other people because the interest rates on banks and other things are going to go up because the bank's going to get back their money some other way. Amen. And they'll penalize people who pay because they're trying to get money from people who didn't pay. So anything you're irresponsible about brings a suffering 
brings a pain on somebody who's irresponsible. Let's say if you're married and you drink and you own dope, dope, don't you know your irresponsibility brings hurt and harm to your wife? Don't you know your wife's money is affected by you? They got to go out there and bail you out of jail. They, the money that you and her together could have is hindered by your irresponsibility. And a lot of us as men, that's why I wrote this book. I am my brother's keeper trying to get men to take their place because men, we are the key to families doing better, to nations doing better, to communities doing better. Our men got to take our place. Yes, women have trying to, are trying to carry the weight. And a lot of women I know are trying to do double because they, they're married. They're connected to an irresponsible man, a man that won't grow up, a man that's still uh, in his 40s or 50s or 30s. But he's acting like a five year old, acting like a 10 year old, still a man want to run the street and, 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 and do drugs and all of that and waste money with his wine old friends out there drinking wine, drinking up all the money and liquor. It's time for you to grow up, sir. Time for you to cut that foolishness out. And let's be the men of God that lead our family to the house of God. Amen. That lead our family in prayer. My wife don't, don't have to worry about praying. Amen. And seeking the face of God. Amen. When we sit down at dinner and eat, I lead the prayer. When, when, I, when I was with my daughter and her together, she would say, go ahead. Amen. I lead the prayer. When my daughter gets sick, my wife, them, go ahead and pray for her. Amen. That's what men are supposed to be. We are coverings. We are to cover our spouses. We are to cover the home. We need men to take your place. Get this book. I am my brother's keeper. Empowering men to take their place. Amen. So, amen. Come on, men. Let's rise back up. And ladies, thank you for doing what you have done to keep the family, amen, moving a little forward. Our children would have been messed up. Our sons and daughters would have been messed up if women hadn't stood in the gap. Thank you, women. A shout out, amen, to all of you again for watching tonight. Again, each and every Tuesday night, we're here at 730. Each and every Thursday, we're here at 7 o'clock. Now, listen at me. Because we were doing this segment of this series on owning property and starting businesses, we went from 730 until about an hour and sometime an hour and 15 minutes. But we're going back to the format of 7 o'clock to 7.30, 30 minutes on Thursday night, because that's originally how Sharp Points was developed, a 30-minute program. And so we're going back to that 30-minute program now that we finish owning property and starting business. So we're, each and every Thursday night, we'll be here on Sharp Points from 7 o'clock to 7.30, all right, 30 minutes only, boom, we're gone, all right, each and every Sunday morning, again, we're here at 10.15, amen, to 11.15, amen, each and every Sunday morning, about an hour, and this Sunday morning, again, I'm excited because we have the great, the honorable, the fantastic woman of God, <laughs> my lovely wife, Reese, is going to be teaching Amen. Again, about organization. This is her third segment on this. Amen. About organization and budgeting. So go back and listen at the other ones so that when you hear it this Sunday morning, you'll be right there with her, ready to flow with her. She has props and other things that she's going to show you how to get organized. Do you not know anything disorganized is chaotic? And God is not the author of confusion and chaos. He's the author of peace. And so God is organized. Everything about God is organized. Do you not know that things about the demonic world is demons function in order, even though they create disorder in the earth? They are functioning in order. Demons work together and they create chaos in the earth. All right. Shout out to Deacon Tyson Hawkins. Hey, D. Shout out to Deacon Tyson Hawkins, Regina Hawkins, his lovely wife, and their lovely daughter, Melody. Me Melanie. I'm sorry. Melanie. Shout out to all of that wonderful family there in Richmond. Amen. A great spiritual son whom I love dearly. Amen. 
Yeah, I appreciate him. Amen. In a special way. Amen. A wonderful man of God. We miss you, D. Yeah. Amen. As well as Regina, we love you all. Amen. All right. Now, there are several ways to give. Several ways that you can give in the kingdom of God. Here's the way you give. The first way to give is you can write us. Write us at Newness of Life Christian Center, P.O. Box 1462, Tarboro, North Carolina, zip code 27886. Again, if the ministry hasn't blessed you at all, done nothing for y'all, you ain't got to give to it. But if the ministry has been an asset to you, if our being here on Facebook Live has been a blessing to you, or if our television ministry or our book writing has blessed you at all, be a blessing to the ministry. Write us again at Newness of Life Christian Center, P.O. Box 1462, Tarboro, North Carolina. The zip code is 27886. Now, also, for those of you who want to give to ministry, to Newness of Life, you can download the Give Plus Church app. Download the Give Plus Church app and type in Newness of Life Christian Center or 27886. And when you type in 27886, Newness of Life Christian Center is going to pop up and you can sow a seed to our ministry. Again, that's for ministry. You can download the Give Plus Church app. Type in Newness of Life Christian Center or 27886 and Newness of Life Christian Center is going to pop up and you can sow a seed. Now, if you would like to give personally to my wife and I, if you want to appreciate us. And again, this month is Pastoral Appreciation Month. Show your pastor that his life, that his ministry has been a blessing to you by giving something natural and something tangible to him. Do you not know that every month several hundred pastors quit? Do you not know that? One of the main things that hinder a lot of leaders from being effective and not being able to focus like they should on feeding you the word of God is because they're worried about something in the materialistic world. You want to free them up from all of that. You want them focused on prayer and the word of God. Why do you think a baseball player is willing to run and almost break his shoulder to catch that baseball? Because he's making $30 million a year. A football player making so many millions of dollars. In other words, they family and uh, they don't, they're not concerned about the natural. Because why? Those people are paying them. Now, so do that. Be a blessing to us. Hit that cash app. Go to your cash app. Hit that dollar sign. When you hit that dollar sign, type in the letter R and then type in the word determine. Go to your cash app. Hit that dollar sign, put the letter R there, and then type in the word determine, D-E-T-E-R-M-I-N-E-D. And that goes to my wife and I for our uh, pastoral uh, anniversary. Amen. This month would have been our pastoral anniversary because ministry began in October. We started the ministry in October, amen, 30 some years ago. And we've been going strong ever since. And we want to continue to go strong. We're going to continue to go strong because God is our help. And I said, this is a pastoral appreciation month. And so if you love and care about your pastor, make him feel special. Amen. If Again, if my wife and I ministry has been a blessing to you, make us feel special. Amen. By sowing a seed. Amen. And you can never do enough for great leaders. I'm telling you, when you have somebody leading you spiritually, Praying with you, praying for you, being there when your loved ones pass away, encouraging you. Amen. It's very, very important. I'm out of time, not out of message. Thank you for letting me feed you this word tonight. Amen. On next Thursday, we're going to deal with a whole nother topic and it's going to bless your life. Again, thank you for watching. Remember Proverbs 27 and verse 17 says, iron sharpen it, iron. God bless you.